What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. I've just finished a very long day on clinical placement. I was attached to the cardiology ward today and I saw a whole range of patients from ones with heart failure to myocarditis to a cardiac arrest. So it's been a very interesting day, but also really, really tiring. So now that I'm home, I just wanna relax. I wanna do something fun and chill. I've seen a bunch of other videos where medical students or doctors react to medical school memes about life at medical school. And so I thought I would try it out. Quick plug, follow me on Instagram. I post there quite often about my daily life at medical school and all kinds of interesting things. I also go live on there every now and again and do Q and A's and things like that. So yeah, feel free to follow me over there if you're interested at all. I motivate myself to study with snacks. You see other people do this too. If you guys have watched one of my recent videos about how I stay so motivated and how I get a lot of work done, I say that you should reward yourself with snacks. So yeah, this definitely works and I'm happy to see that other people are doing it too. Although Bounty is very dead, I'm pretty sure nobody eats that. Comment down below what your favorite chocolate bar is. Mine probably has to be Snickers or Mars. First year medical student, finally a doctor after 15 years. Please no, please, please no. I mean, I know these memes are all fun and games, but I hope this doesn't happen. Hmm, that's sweet. My sympathetic nervous system when I'm doing a presentation. Yep, fully active and firing. Me, why does my chest hurt? Google, because you're about to die. When you realize you left everything till last minute so your overnight needs to be 63 hours longer. This is why I don't leave things to the last minute. This exact face right here. That looks stressful and that looks scary and I want nothing to do with it. When a non-medical person gives you medical advice, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, tell me more, <laughs> tell me more. Obviously as medical students, we think we know everything and we go around diagnosing all of our friends and whatever. After an exam, you start remembering the questions and the correct answers like, ooh, I had this just the other day. I was so certain that I'd put down the right answer and then I came home and Googled it and it turned out I was wrong. And yeah, basically felt like my head was on fire. After my awful presentation, me, the class, my teacher, my friend, Oh man, I'm horrible with presentations. I get so nervous, I get so shy, I get red and sweaty. I hate, hate, hate giving presentations. But if you've got some good friends to give you more support, then that definitely helps. December, in life of a med student, around the world, medical college. Yep, I mean, I spent a huge portion of my Christmas break studying for my upcoming exam. It's just what you've got to do. When the professor is passionate about teaching and you genuinely understand and enjoy the class, vibes, mood, mood. I can relate so hard. Every now and again, you'll have a lecture where you really like that content or a professor who you just love their teaching style and feel that you can understand everything that they're saying very well. And it's just great. It feels like the sun is shining down on you and you have this beam of radiation and motivation to learn medicine. Yeah, it's great. I have so much to study today. Also me, excuses. No, 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 no. Don't make excuses, make a plan and finish all your work. Waiting for the use of Krebs cycle knowledge in medicine practice. Yeah, it's never gonna come. You will literally never, ever, ever need the Krebs cycle. You just have to memorize it to pass all of your exams and to get into medical school. And I promise you'll never use it again. Actually, maybe for one thing, G6PD deficiency. I can study with music, it helps me concentrate, me 10 minutes later. Uh, me every single time. The reason that I don't listen to music when I study for my exams is because I just start rapping whatever the lyrics are or I start bumping my head and going along to the beat. I can't listen to music and also focus on something else at the same time. The only time I can listen to music when studying is if it's an instrumental and that's a jazz and hip hop instrumental playlist or if I'm doing something that takes absolutely no thinking with words. So for example, if I'm doing math calculations or drawing out different chemical structures back in chemistry when I was studying that, then I can listen to music with words. But if I'm reading words and listening to music with words, I can't get anything done. I'm from the future. <laughs> Please start studying. That's a good one. When you incorrectly self-diagnose yourself with the help of Dr. Google and WebMD. <laughs> I mean, this definitely happens to me, but I'm just gonna replace Dr. Google and WebMD with me and myself. Anytime I have a little bit of chest pain or my feet are tingling, or for some reason my heart is beating extra fast, I will immediately start thinking about all the medical diagnoses that I've learned about. Honestly, I need to chill. I'm 24, I'm fit and healthy, and I don't need to be scaring myself with all of these thoughts. All year, night before exam, and then during the exam. So kind of accurate for me, I tend to study throughout the year so that this over here doesn't happen to me the night before the exam. However, for one of my progress tests in second year, the paper was handed to me and I started looking through the questions and I just couldn't shake the feeling that I was sitting the wrong exam. I kept looking at the questions and I was like, I've never seen this before. I've never studied this before. What is this material? And so I called over the invigilator and I was like, hey, are you sure this is the paper for second year medical students sitting their second progress test? And she was like, yes. 
So I was like, okay, I guess I have to continue now. And then after flipping through a couple more questions and a couple more pages, I was still so shocked at the material I was seeing. I was like, I don't understand what half of this means. So I called her over again and I asked again, are you 100% sure that this exam is relevant to me as a second year medical student? And she's like, yep. And at that point, I just had to suck it up and go through the exam. That was not a fun time. During pharmacology exams, what are the side effects of yeah. Basically, almost all drugs will have side effects of nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. So if you don't know the answer to the question, that's probably your best guess. When you wake up in the morning and it feels like you only slept for eight minutes. Oh my God, all too often, way, way, way too often. Especially if I'm going to placement, I end up waking up at around 6 a.m. and then have like an hour and a half of traveling to do. So I feel like this all the time. Thought medicine is all about studying for five years. No son, it's five zero, 50 years. I mean, this is absolutely true. When you finish high school and you get accepted to medical school, you're like, yay, five years and I'm gonna finally be a doctor. But then after that, you have your core medical training and then you have your specialty training and it's just endless, endless studying, endless exams and continual learning for life. Personally, I don't find this to be a bad thing about medicine. I love continuous learning. I love learning new things all the time. So I'm really excited about this aspect of my career. But yeah, the exams don't stop and there's definitely a lot of studying to do. Can the medical student examine you please? Patient. <laughs> Oh man. So when you're in the hospital and you're a medical student, obviously patients know that you're not real doctors. And so some of them are less inclined to have you examine them or take a history from them because they think you're not gonna help them and it's just a waste of their time. I'm not gonna lie though, the vast majority of patients that I've seen in the hospital that I've interacted with have been very pleasant and more than willing to talk to me and let me examine them. When the patient changes his history in front of the attending, Oh my God. You'll be asked to go take a history from a patient, which is great. You go, you ask them about their presenting complaint, the history presenting complaint, social history, family history. They'll give you all this wonderful information. Then you'll go and report back all that information to your senior. He'll come with you to see the patient again and ask any more questions that they want to know. The patient will tell you, yeah, my chest pain started 10 days ago. And then when you're there with your senior and you ask when the chest pain started, they'll say it started yesterday or three days ago. So yeah, this actually does happen. After you studied everything for the exam, just before sleeping, you do a mental review and realize you know nothing. I mean, this always happens before exams. You feel like you don't know anything. And then you go in there and somehow your brain manages to pick up the information that you need. The last molecule of serotonin in my brain doing its best to make sure I have a good day. <laughs> That's really good, that's good. My fitness goal is to be able to do two minutes of CPR without looking like I need to be coded myself. CPR is very, very tiring. If you've ever done a basic life support or advanced life support course and had to do CPR on a dummy, then you'll know it's really, really tiring. And you have to keep doing CPR nonstop until the ambulance arrives, until the AED arrives. And if you don't have someone else to switch out with and keep rotating, then it can be very, very exhausting. Pre-med, med school, well, this sucks. <laughs> You know, I got really happy when I got to medical school. Pre-med was some of the most difficult times of my life with the amount of studying and work and everything that I had to do. Now that I'm in medical school, I am so happy. I'm finally on the path that I've wanted to be on for so long. I'm learning so many wonderful new things. It's amazing. Multiple choice questions be like. Oh my. So in my undergraduate degree, we had multiple choice questions where only one out of the five responses was correct. However, in medical school, we have what's called single best answer questions, which means that more than one of the answers can be correct. It's just about which one is more correct or which one you need to do first. And this is so frustrating in our medical school exams because I'll eliminate three out of the five answers and be left with two, which are both completely correct and both of which I've studied for and I know are potential answers to this question. But of course, one of them is more appropriate for the patient or more of a correct thing to do at this current time and you just have to choose what you think is best. I think I should study on my bed so I can rest my back. <laughs> Okay, very, very relatable. I have had back problems for as long as I can remember now. And so in order to alleviate that back pain, I would often go to my bed and try and do some studying there. But inevitably after 10, 15, 20 minutes, I would get so sleepy, I just have to move right back. That's a good one. Me trying to enter medical school. Squeeze in. You can do it, buddy. Beat out the competition. Get those good grades. Do your work experience. Come on. Go, go, go. Trying to medical school. Let me in, let me in. Let me out, let me out. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of work, but I promise it's worth it and it's very, very fun. All right guys, this video has gone on for quite a while now. This is definitely the pick me up that I needed today. I'm in a much better mood. Hope you guys are having a great time at medical school or in high school or university, whatever it is you're doing, working hard toward your goals. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. Peace.